Hey everyone. We are jumping into looping mindsets. Mindsets. All right, so what we chat chat about before was pretty much um, how to build a loop. Like that is literally all that it is. You just like push down, record, and then you get your timing correct. As soon as you nail the timing, you're going to get used to it. Um, it's super weird. Everyone messes up at the beginning. Trust me, um, no one's perfect. Uh, maybe there's one human that was... Maybe Jacob Collier could be like the one perfect human uh, when it comes to music. But what we need to go into before we start elaborating on different techniques is understanding looping mindsets. Now, when I am talking about this, I'm talking about how you want to start thinking about how to use your loop pedal. Now, in my mind, there's kind of like two schools. There's like, or there's three. First one, your bedroom friend. It is like the thing that sits in your studio or your bedroom that helps you flesh out ideas. It's just like it allows you to accompany yourself when you like when you can't. Um, typically, that's for like guitarists. They can play chords and then they can solo over it um, or whatever you guys need. It, say your songwriting. It is a really great tool to play back things for you um, in real time, and you can do things like that. That's that's one thing. That's completely like not what I use it for. Um, but it's what I did use it for when I was like, you know, 17, 18 and I had my boss looper. I would just play a chord progression and I'd solo over it. It was really fun. So that's it. As a, a Purely as a practice tool, that's what you can use the looper for. Um, now, the second school that I, this is where I categorize myself as, um, is using looping as an effect. So... I use looping as an effect to a song to allow me to accent the different, just accent arrangements. So it allows me to really recreate the recording as close as I can, but I'm using it more as an effect rather as in I'm trying to recreate the whole recording. So I can create tension and resolution. I can bring drums in. Um, typically, you will not be creating huge range, arrangements this way. Um, the goal is speed. You want to get the loop as quick as possible. You don't want to be going crazy, um, doing a bunch of stuff. It's very minimal. You're doing like a chord, um, chord progression, drum and bass, um, and then you maybe do a couple of fills and some harmonies and you're, you're off to the races. Um, the other person that the reason why I do it this way is um, I'm influenced by Ed Sheeran. And Ed Sheeran is 100% an effect guy. Uh, he will not waste time. If you ever watch Ed Sheeran loop, it is like, how fast can he get you into his song? He is not trying to sell you on his creativity and his ability as a looper. He's just like, but it amazes you some of the songs that he can pull off that fast. Um, he's just like, boom, groove, chords, let's go. And he's immediately in the song. Um, he's not doing wild stuff. Maybe during the song he can elaborate on it, but typically he is just an effect guy. He just adding, the looper is adding an effect to the song. So that is my school. That's how I like to do it. Um, and most of my looping, when I give you guys the, um, the, the videos of me, how I loop, um, of like, I'll give you examples of songs. That's how they're all going to be. Um, they're not, I'm not going to show you guys how to be crazy good, um, uh, because I don't do that stuff. I, I j only use this looper. Like the loop pedal is just when I don't have a band. Cause I would much rather be playing in a band than playing with a loop pedal. Just that's me. I prefer, I prefer having musicians around me. I prefer bouncing off their ideas. I don't mind the creativity that I can get out of this. Um, but it is a band aid for the real like amazing thing that I love, which is just have, being in a room with musicians and um, performing on stage with musicians. That's that's what I love the most. Now, the third school is like the ones that I just cannot, like uh, my brain cannot compute at how awesome these musicians are. Now, these are the guys, they are the one-man bands. They are the Carl Walkners. They are Bernhoft. Um, and... Like what they're going to do is they're going to create this soundscape and they're going to have all these layers and they're going to be so creative in their layers and they're going to have like really intricate, awesome 
things that they come up with live on the spot. Uh, it takes like a minute to two minutes for them to build up their songs. And man, if you don't mind it, it is like the best payoff to hear someone do something like that. Um, and I tried it once. I tried doing it I when I first looped. Um, I'm a huge fan of Carl Walkner. He's just amazing. Uh, and then Bernhoft. Uh, I don't know if you guys have checked him out. I believe that's his name. But he has a song called Come On and Talk To Me check it out on youtube come on talk to me um that was like one of the biggest like oh my god i one day i wish i could like loop this this would be like like pinnacle for me it'd be like so cool um which i haven't tried yet which i hopefully will but they like what they do is they just they have their full creative brain jumping in like how can i build a, a song like a band and how can I have all the different elements and how can I perform them and how can I arrange them and just like throw them everywhere the way that I feel like it should be. And it's it's all about creativity. It's all about sounds. So this is where getting into your effects is going to be really important. Um, instrumentation, they'll use tambourines, kazoos. Uh, they'll use the different timbres of their guitar to get like better drum sounds or different drum sounds or different hi-hats. Um uh, like there was a thing like uh, Carl will do like he'll have like this really breathiness to his like beatbox to create like air in the in the background or he'll just like he'll do his his beat and then he'll just be like <sighs> or whatever he does over the top of it to get like this airiness that fits. Oh, it's just the level of detail these guys go into is just amazing, like straight up amazing. Now, for my objective I, I tried it and it, I loved it. I found I didn't connect with my audience. So um, it it just lined up for me that I was doing my loops that way um, for a long time, like when I first was getting into the multi-track looping. Uh, and then what I did was uh, I went to an Ed Sheeran concert, um, one of the recent ones he did in Brisbane. And I was like, okay, I'm going to watch this guy like a hawk I'm going to see everything he does and I'm going to I'm going to figure this out. Like what is what is Ed Sheeran's thing? Like why why is why does um some artists go out in live loop and they do it one way and then why do some artists like him get to go out there and he's live looping to 50,000 plus people? Now, there's a lot of other elements to it, but the true most important thing that it came down to in my opinion is song Ed Sheeran has complete and utter, like, the the level of, like, laser focus he has on songwriting is just insane. And he will never step on a song. He will never fuck with the song in, in a way that it, it's detrimental. Like, the closest one that I could think of that was when he gets, like, really wild was at the end of the show, he was doing encore part. I think it was like, you need me, I don't need you. And he gets like full on into it. And he's just like, lays down the loop. And then he's just up there running around rapping. Like that's the most that I saw him like, whoa, this is a bit like disconnected. Um, uh, and I felt like people in the crowd, unless they loved the song and they loved Ed Sheeran and, and what they were doing, like the people that I knew that were loving the rest of the show, they weren't really connecting with it. That was the furthest he went in the um in the space of like the one man band thing but everything was keep it to the song keep it laser focused on the song and so after i watched that i was like okay i'm just going to dumb down everything i do i stopped making hi hat sounds um i stopped being fancy with my bass like grooves i stopped adding extra layers on the guitar in fact i got to the point where like i was like trying to layer all these different parts and i just like eliminated it all and then some loops, I would just do like chord progression, kick snare, and then uh, a bass groove. And that was it. And then I just, I'm just i like playing the song. And so some songs I could just get done in like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Uh, and then I can immediately engage with the crowd. The second I did that, all my bar shows, all my party shows, everything like that, I just had like so much more... Uh, time to connect with people there was never a boring moment like they gave me their 30 seconds if you go past like if you go past a minute 
um, it's going to be hard. Like you, if you're going to play the game, right? So you got to think like, okay, well, am I doing it for me or am I doing it for the crowd? As soon as you hit one minute, um, typically on the radio, the rule is get to your chorus by one minute. Now, that is the rule for pop music. And some of these people are hitting their choruses at like, 35, 45 seconds, and they are the most fire songs. In fact, they will start on their chorus. Uh, Last Night by Morgan Wallen. Intro for like 10 seconds, bam. Last night we let the... And like, those are the songs that just like hit you hard. Like Luke Combs, all these people, Ed Sheeran, everyone. They just, they're going to get you to the chorus right away. Now, you with a loop pedal, um, you got to respect the same rule. If you're trying to keep people engaged... uh, then you need to finish your loops very, very fast. So pick the mindset that you want to test out with. Um, Sorry, I'm a bit ranting on it, but it is important because not a lot of people talk about this. They're like, oh, you can build this, you can build this, but they're not going to talk to you about like, what is the cadence of someone's attention? Because if you practice um, and you get really good at like, okay, I lay this loop. Oh, it's not exactly there. All right, I'm going to redo it. And then like, say your first layer is like 45 seconds. Like, say I'm going to, like, loop Little Wing by Jimi Hendrix. Like, that's a long progression. That's not really a song that you want to be looping. That's just a song you want to sing and have fun and groove out to. Um, That's it. Like, you don't want to be going wild. Now, a song that's really great, this is why Ed Sheeran is amazing, Uh, a great song to loop is a chord progression that doesn't change and a chord progression that's done very fast. So if we go over, like, this one, I'll, I'll try and count the how long it goes. I'm going to look at the time on the here. One, two, three, four. So that's a, a five, six second chord progression. That's shape of you, right? Now, that's quick. Now, if I get that chord progression done in my first try, and then I do my beat over it very quickly... Like I jump in as fast as I can and I do my bass as fast as I can. That's like, I could probably get it done in like 20 seconds if I'm really, really fast. Now I add one, one really fast vocal harmony, like, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. that's another like eight to 10 seconds. Uh, and then if I add an extra little guitar fill of like, that's another five or six seconds. So I'm getting under the one minute and now I can immediately go in because people will be like, ooh, what's he doing? He's like doing fancy things. Like this is really, really cool. And that that is the draw. That's the hook. But if you're hooking and you think that doing another layer is going to hook them more, hook them more, no one's thinking like that. They're like, okay, can you just play the song now? If you hit a minute, everyone will just think they'll either check out um, and then you've lost that momentum you've built. You've, you're, you're, you're building momentum and then you lose it. Um, uh, if you're going to go past one minute, you really need to make sure that your payoff is so good, like so good, like Carl Walkner good. Uh, that is the only time I will ever be like, go past a minute is if you've got a skill set like Carl Walkner and you can build that and work on it um, and definitely do it in your own time. But if you're wanting to connect with people immediately, faster the better. Um, respect chord progressions. Uh, don't go crazy on stuff. If the chord progression is wild and really challenging, you can do techniques like just play the beat. Like Ed Sheeran, when he goes to play dive, he's not going to record the whole dive and add a bunch of bass and do all this, even though it would be really, really cool. But he knows what the song's about. It's about singing this beautiful melody, beautiful chords and connecting with people. So he just goes, boom. And then, baby, I came on too strong. And that's it. And he's just straight away singing the song. And he's got this beat in the background. And then he takes out the beat when he wants to. And then he brings it back in when he's ready to bring in more. And he just lets his guitar playing do the the work. So that's all I really want to go over when it comes to mindsets and jamming and uh, seeing how you want to do it. So just a quick recap. You can either be using your looper as a practice tool. Um, so that's in your bedroom, improvising, whatever. Uh, or you could use it as an effect, which is how I prefer to do it, how Ed Sheeran does it, which is you are enhancing the song that you are playing and you are 
only being very minimal in the amount of looping that you're doing. And then the third one is you are a one man band and you are doing very intricate arrangements and you are going to be delivering a very, very amazing, unique sound and a unique approach to a song. So that's all I really have to say on mindsets. And then, um, yeah, so think about what you want to do. Try all of them. Uh, and like see where it fits with you. And whenever you have a song, just always in the back of your mind, be like, am I going to do it in a way that I want to connect with people immediately? Or am I doing it in a way I want to see how creative I can be with this song? So, cause like they all have different, all the songs have different vibes and different approaches. And it's as well for you. Like when you are writing a song or like you're, you're creating an arrangement for a song, you don't want to be like, oh, I, Luan says I have to keep it like short. It's like, you know, like you can have like five songs that are short that are like super clean, engage with people. And then when you've hooked people or say like, I'm, I'm giving context for other people because like typically you're going to perform to other people and whatever. Um, but then you can have another song. You're like, nah, this is for me. You know, those are my, those are my good ones. And then this is the one that, I, I do for me and I want to be creative and I want to add a little bit more depth to my set or a depth to my, my repertoire. And so when people love what you do, they don't mind. Um, they'll be like, oh, cool. He's taking care of us with these ones. Um, so m we don't mind listening to this one. Um, and the people who really don't like who might mind, they'll just go and get a drink at the show. So, um, or they'll come back. On the next stream. <laughs> but that's all I have really to say when it comes to mindsets. It's a really important topic. It's not talked about enough. Um, but uh, if you can jump in and define your expectation towards what you're going to get out of your loop, it is going to change your whole um, approach to looping. Uh, it's something I wish I jumped in earlier. But yeah. All right. I will see you guys in the next uh, module. Let's go.